Hidden quietly between the shores of Vancouver and Stanley Park lies an island with a deep and jarring history long forgotten. The tree burial site of the Squamish First Nation. They call the island the Island of Dead Men. It is where a historic battle took place between two rival tribes and some 200 warriors were massacred. It's a uh, place of uh, where our people used to bury uh, their, their people who passed away. Uh, and they used to bury them, uh, didn't bury them, they sat them up in boxes and trees like a mummification process. But there's an old story that I heard about there, about the myth people from long ago, the real ancient days when two big groups of people were warring and their canoes clashed there because it was a narrow channel and nobody was winning and so the, it was a draw and then they, uh, uh, one side captured the women and children of the other side and said that um, we'll let them go and let them live if you all surrender and be put to death. So all the warriors on one side did that. They were all put to death and, and the uh, children and women were let go. And since then there's been a special flower that grew as the blood of those warriors spilt into the ground, a special flower sprang up and it can only be found on that island. can't be found anywhere else in the world. Have you ever been on it? I've prowled the length of it and nearly got lost. Uh, it's pretty wild. Not much good for anything. Some people think it's valuable. A lot of litigation and fighting going on about it. That's the way it's always been. People have always fought over that place. Hundreds of years ago, people fought over it. Our people, they say hundreds of years to come, everyone will still fight over it. Never settle that place. Dead Man's Island always means a fight for someone. We fought ourselves for it once a long time ago, way before all this. Fought killed each other until the island ran with blood and the seawater about it was stained red. It was then our people said that the fire flower was first seen growing on this coast or any a fine color for it was born and grew from the hearts and blood of our ancestors. We have no such men now, no fighters like those men, no courage like theirs, but I tell you the story then you will understand. You will understand it then. Now, all peaceful. Even dead men's spirit doesn't fight now. But a long time after it happened, those spirits fought. Oh, the legend? Yes, our people, they call it the island of dead men. There was war everywhere. Fierce tribes from the northern coast, savage tribes from the south, all met there and battled and raided, burned and captured, tortured and killed their enemies. The narrows were choked with war canoes. And Sigali the creator, he who is a man of peace, turned his face away from his native children. About this island there was dispute and contention. The spirit men from the north claimed it as their chanting ground. The men from the south laid equal claim to it. But neither would give way, yet neither conquered. You are an kept We are the stronger, yet not as long as I'm here. About them, on the waters, on the mainland, raged the warfare of their respective tribes. After many months, the warriors on both sides weakened. They said the actions of the rival spirit men were bewitching them, making their hearts like children's and their arms as women's. So friend and foe arose as one man 
and drove the medicine men from the island, herded them through the narrows, and banished them out to sea. Then the tribes once more fell upon each other in battle, while those of the north followed the medicine men further out to sea to make sure of their banishment. Those from the south returned and seized the women, children, and old from their enemy's camp, moved them all to the island of dead men, and held them as captives. The pick of the seven warriors had fallen when their greatest warrior mounted a large stump on the eastern shore. Brave and unmindful of a thousand weapons aimed at his heart, he uplifted his hand, palm outward, the signal for conference. O men of the upper coast, you are more numerous than we are. Your tribe is larger, your endurance greater. We will kill all your captives before your eyes, or you can come have your wives, your mothers, your fathers, by giving us one of your best and bravest warriors. If you refuse these terms, we will yet fight to the finish. Who will consent to suffering death in their stand? Speak, you have a choice. Out before a long file of southern warriors they stood, their chins uplifted, their eyes defiant. Each leaned forward and laid down their weapons at their feet then stood erect with empty hands and laughed forth their challenge to death. A thousand arrows ripped the air, two hundred throats roared a death cry, then two hundred fearless hearts ceased. Sometimes I don't believe it. So many men. Yes, men. The white men call it Dead Man's Island. That is their way, but we call it the Island of Dead Men. Deadman's Island was a part of the general area where, um, where the, the at, at, at contact, uh, Euro, I'm talking about European contact, uh, it was a fully functioning um, village of Kwai Kwai. The biggest Squamish village at that time, our spiritual ways was very predominant, that, that it, um, it, uh, it impacted the whole so socio-political uh, w ways we lived as communities and villages and our, our traditions were all based on our, our spiritual knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and we do know that uh, the whole history says of that area, I'm talking generally about the whole area, Dead Man's Island, Stanley Park, all the way where, where Siwash uh, Rock is now, Seawall, all that whole area was, uh, was considered to be a geographically, spiritually power. The other part of the warrior um, code, the warrior, is that uh, it's a spiritual commitment and a, a physical commitment. The warrior vow goes, uh, and it's a personal covenant with the Creator, the commitment to the Creator, through the sacred fire ceremony that you'll protect the women, children, and elders during peacetime, and the land rights and the, and the people during times of war. Uh, so we're actually, in effect, uh, policemen during peacetime and the military during, uh, during, t during times of war. One thing about Dead Man's Island is certain, its name. Once marked by cedar box graves and simple headboards, its graves, none of which are visible today, contain First Nations, early pioneers, suicides, infants, smallpox victims, Canadian Pacific Railway construction casualties, and people killed in the Great Fire of Vancouver, among others.